Welcome back. Welcome back. Oh my God, I'm so okay. excited. I don't know what to do with myself. We've not been in these chairs for like a couple of weeks now. Oh my God, I think it's been a month. I think Has it's it? Been Has it been a month? Last oh my God, yeah. that's a long time. That's the longest actually. That's the longest we've been without filming. I feel rusty. <laughs> rusty. <laughs> I feel very rusty. I feel the same. I'm checking myself a little bit more because I was going to say yeah. something. There. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew what she was going to say then. Oh my God. See, this is how I know Kay very well because I knew what the next line I was <laughs> when I said that. Oh my God. No, but honestly, guys, welcome back. And we are very excited to be back. I think this was overdue, wasn't it? I think we needed to get back on track and. As per usual, me and Kay have had a lovely long chat before we started filming, like we always do, don't yeah. we? Half of it, I just want to be like, can we just switch the cameras on now? Yeah, because or can we just have the camera? Yeah. Can we have the camera in the dressing room while we get ready yeah. so then we can get all the nice juice yeah. <laughs> that happens? I, I feel like why we started this podcast was because of those type of conversations yeah. that we have as friends that go deep, but are really meaningful and... Yeah help us a lot in terms of trying to just navigate life in general and obviously the reason for starting the podcast was to just share that with people who may be struggling but also who may just not have that other person there that they can you know offload onto as much as we do with each other I know and it's also just a bit of a reminder to say that Again, nobody's perfect and we all go, go through hard times ourselves and we've spoken about this before we started filming today. I was just saying to Kay how, you know, sometimes she's having a bad time or a hard time and I'm there for her and everything and it can be the other way around and it's so important that you acknowledge where your friend is going, what is going, what well, in your case, what you're going through or what I'm going through. And it's really important to have that chat with them and be like, do you know what? It's fine. Don't worry. You know, we all go through hard times. We all go through like little hiccups, you know, it's okay. But it's knowing that you've got someone there. And I, I understand that not everyone has got that rock solid person there that you know, that can just pick up the phone and be like, babe, I'm not okay, you know, or like for my instance, babe, I don't feel like filming today, or I don't feel like showing my face today. And they understand, they don't take it as an insult or I've heard a lot of people when, you know, they get quite angry when somebody doesn't want to show up as a friend in a way of like, they don't understand. And sometimes people need time to process things. And some people would just like to throw themselves out in the world. And that's absolutely fine. You know, everyone deals with things in a different way. But in my instance, I do like to take myself away from the crowd a little bit and just see what happens what what's happening in my mind and what how I process things and it's nice sometimes to have someone that says listen I know you're going through a hard time I'm gonna leave you to it but I am can I just remind you that I am here whenever you need me so don't feel like you've not got anyone around I think that's so important because like you said there are people out there who kind of would take that personally and I think that's mm. so difficult in friendship groups yeah. because of the, the different dynamics. You know, someone might take that as you're being a bad friend and have it as almost that's quite self-centered. You know, mm. you're not understanding or realizing that other people might be going through a difficult time or your friends going through a difficult time. And sometimes people need that space to process things. And I think... It's a bit of a balance, isn't it? Because yeah. equally, there's kind of this shutting yourself away, avoiding situations, which in the short term can be beneficial because it helps give you the space that you need to just kind of gather your thoughts, mm -hmm. indulge in a little bit of self-care, which is so important. And I think we'll come back to in a moment. But the flip side of it is maybe locking yourself away for too long just kind of takes you away from that supportive network and mm -hmm. 
the maybe clarifying thoughts because if you're with yourself too long I guess a lot of the negative thoughts can creep in and the that confirmation bias can start to kind of rear its ugly heads as such. Yeah. I'm like. glad I'm glad you mentioned that actually because that it's something that I've noticed in my pattern when I'm going through something. It doesn't have to be something really bad. It can just be like a really stressful day or anything really. But I feel like sometimes it this applies a lot to overthinkers, I think, because I'm I can put myself in that box. Like I'm a big overthinker. I always think ahead a little bit too much. And it can be your worst enemy. Like I can be my worst enemy at times when I just think what am I doing? Why am I constantly just, yeah, okay, it's good to have a plan for what happens for your next step. But sometimes having friends there or people that can just pick up on that trait and you know me well enough to know when I'm going into that mindset. So you can just pick it up straight away off the back. You're like, okay, she's going into it right now. I know she's doing it. But it's hard sometimes for people that are not as self-aware of their friends or family or, you know, work colleagues. It doesn't have to be your best friend. It can be someone that you work with on a daily basis that you've noticed that they're not quite themselves and they're not talking about it because they're not probably as comfortable to talk to you about it because you're not their best mate, but you do still work with them every day. Mm. And you, it, we're just here to just kind of explain situations situations and traits of how you could acknowledge traits in people that when it happens and that pattern kicks in. And it's so important, honestly. I think self-awareness of yourself and of other people is probably the biggest thing that I've learned so far with starting this podcast because not a lot of people talk about it. Everything like we said before is so surface level, like, oh, they said they're okay. Well, isn't everyone saying that they're okay? Like, you know that, you know, when you go for a walk and everyone says, oh, are you okay? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, everyone is going to say they're okay. Nobody's going to stop and just be like, oh, no, I'm not. Mm. Unless you're foreign <laughs> and you're very blunt and bored. <laughs> Actually, I've had a really crappy day Do you know today. what? That's one thing that I've no noticed with foreign people, which I can relate myself, that when you meet them, they're like, oh, my God, this has happened and this is what. And some people are not used they're to that type. They're oversharing. Yeah, but that's what who who they are. And what I think that's, again, culture. It's how, yeah. what, how culture plays. It's so funny, isn't it? Because they always kind of, wherever you go, and especially the Americans, like, really rip into the British people for being, like, so kind of mm. PC and oh I'm really sorry and blah blah and just kind of everything's rosy and everything's okay yeah I know but then again we're so guilty of it like think about are you now bumping into someone you're going through a hard time and somebody oh you're right love how are you doing just putting on a brave face oh yeah I'm great thanks how are you yeah. and then you would net that person would never know that you're going through a hard time and I think this is the crucial like why we want to talk about it so much because you just never know yeah. what people go through and it's so important to be kind honestly I think if anything you could be hating on that person like and I'm talking to the point of maybe you don't like that person that you've just bumped into but you do have to have some sort of level of, of understanding that not everyone it's okay every day and you just have to just take a step back and just be like oh you know they seemed a bit off today. They might be going through something. Yeah. I just think everything that you've just said then, a lot of people really resonate with it. Mm. It was kind of really comes from the heart and it's so important because I guess a lot of people out there don't really have that level of awareness of, you know, if your friend is going through a difficult time, Maybe it's not even, you know, a difficult time in terms of the going through, you know, some sort of trauma or some sort of difficulty, but it might just be stress, for example, like mm -hmm. the really stressed with work or the stress with the relationship or whatever it is. Not a lot of people have that kind of 
level of outside awareness beyond themselves yeah so they might take somebody else's behavior really personally and see it as almost like an attack on them oh the distance in themselves it must be because of me and Mm -hmm. that really stems from your own feelings maybe at that particular time or your own kind of perceptions of what's happened in the past or learned beliefs which we've spoken about before Mm -hmm. and I think that's where a lot of relationships break down whether it's relationships or whether it's friendships I feel because I mean it can be labeled selfish but I think selfish is a really simplistic word for it I think Mm. what it is really is just a lack of awareness basically about your own feelings and what's going on because if you can't empathize with somebody else's situation then you've not really got a level of self-awareness of your own situation or what might be happening for you yeah I see that for me there's been so many situations in the past where I've dealt with being impulsive you know where you've said something that you would not normally have said if Maybe you weren't stressed or you weren't going through a hard time at, the t- well, at that particular time. And what I've learned, I would say probably in the last year that I've tried to like, not necessarily educate myself, but in a way of trying to get into this pattern of if I'm not having a bad, well, wait, 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 if I'm having a great day, great. But if I'm having a bad day, admitting that I'm having a bad day, I think that's the first thing because I actually remember a conversation that I had recently with one of my friends and, you know, we were having a bit of a difficult conversation and I realized that I am really in a bad space right now to speak to her about this. And why am I responding impulsively when I shouldn't really be doing this? All I need to do is... I'm not really in a good frame of mind right now to reply to your message. I will get back to you in a couple of days. But instead, I responded and quickly I realized and I just said, okay, I'm sorry. I've sent her another message and said, I'm really sorry about how quick I've responded to this. I'm really having a hard time at the moment. And I apologize for my like impulsive response. Like this is not how this should have come across whatsoever. But I think the most important thing is acknowledging it, that you've done it, and quickly go back to your friend or whoever you're speaking to and just say, I'm sorry, you know, make sure that you you are verbalizing that with like that person your behavior. and not letting that like prolong it you know because yeah. that other person could be thinking oh my god what the hell yeah. like what's going on that wow do you know what I'm actually blown away by that why by what you've just said because I think that is that demonstrates such a, a level of kind of awareness and like you said just how far you've come in mm. being able to think actually do you know what because I'm impulsive as well and I really recognize that but being able to actually admit it and admit when you're wrong that's hard that's it's heavy that's really hard so the fact that you've done that and actually owned it and said you know what I'm sorry and it comes back to well you can't control their response. They, they might be really annoyed. Mm. They might not accept your apology. Well, that's fine. That's okay. But at least you've owned it. And the, the kind of growth within that comes f- not from you being able to repair that with your friends. Yeah. But the fact that you've owned the situation and actually acknowledged that that's such an important part uh, of you and who you are as a person. Growing as a person as well. And being yeah. able to say, you know, we're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. I've got my flaws as well. And mm. maybe I don't respond to situations in a perfect way, but I can acknowledge that and own it and apologize where need be. And I think reflecting on some of the things that I do as well, you know, I think we can all benefit from that particularly Mm. I mean this goes across the board doesn't it not just even in friendships but relationships I feel as though is a big one with that god can you imagine spending all that time with someone 24 7 surely you'll come to a point where you will be impulsive and you will be saying things that you probably will regret later I just think that recently I've been put in situations where it's challenged that side of 
you know, that old way of thinking, how I used to be and how impulsive I used to react rather than think before I speak, basically. And I think that's not only just with being self-aware, but I think that does come with maturity. I think that's a big one that I think people need to understand that, you know, it, it's it's you have to live life and learn and mature to realize your bad traits that doesn't just come naturally all the time in your 20s early 20s that's just not going to be natural for you to do when you're so young I'm not saying that you can't be more mature when you're younger and mature for your age but I'm just saying that you probably wouldn't recognize the patterns that happen all the time and can just go back and say by the way I'm really sorry about that you know, that was, that was not okay. That's not acceptable. Mm. I shouldn't have said that. And I wasn't, I was really stressed or whatever, but I just think that you, as a, as a person yourself, you need to acknowledge that you're going through a hard time first, that you're stressed second, whatever is going through, you need to acknowledge it to yourself because that's the only way you're going to be able to go to the other person and say, I'm sorry, yeah. or, um, you know, I'm not feeling great. But if you're just sat in that bubble and you're not acknowledging that you're not okay, then how can you go back to the other person yeah. and say that? I think as well, what's huge in all of this is that kind of understanding of being kind to yourself as well. Because a lot of people will beat themselves up for this type of behavior or response. And it's something that's really common, you know, being impulsive, saying maybe mean things or impulsive things that you did. Sarcasm. Mean. Sar well, <laughs> sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think sarcasm's necessarily oh, bad trait. Bloody hell. If there's one thing I've got, guys, is sarcasm up my you, sleeve. <laughs> you know, I always think though, maybe this is like a projection on, on how I am as a person because <laughs> I'm really sarcastic. And I think, well, if you don't get that I'm being sarcastic, well, that's you that's on you <laughs> that's on you for not having that sense of humor <laughs> dry yeah. sarcastic dry. dry yeah um <laughs> yeah um, or is it a reflection on us who knows mm. um or both <laughs> yeah or maybe a bit of both but now you know if somebody somebody would really beat themselves up say that they i'm just going to use your example of responding to whatever friends it was in you know in mm. haste or whatever and maybe not owning it maybe not apologizing maybe sticking to your guns but then later feeling like you are such a crappy person or a really bad friend and you know oh now they're gonna hate me they're not gonna respond to me um and and then you go into that cycle of self-loathing and then you're just even more negative and it, it just feeds that that reinforcement mm. that maybe you're not worthy or you're unlovable or you're not a good friend so you don't deserve friends or mm. you hide yourself away and you know maybe your friend takes that in a certain way and it confirms that again you're not lovable you don't deserve friends maybe I should be on my own forever and you yeah. hear that quite a lot don't you people saying that and I think it's really important what I was taking from what you were saying then the, the massive part of growth for you in that situation was just acknowledging that, you know, it, it's just something that you're working on. Mm. And it doesn't mean that you're a bad person at all if you respond in a particular way, because we've all got our reasons for how and why we respond. And it's massively linked to how we were growing up, what our environment is like, what situation we're in at the mo this moment in time, mm -hmm. you know, our environment plays a huge part and what's going on. And I think, you know, you, you just hit the nail on your head, the head when you said just be a little bit kinder. Yeah, I think, and also just sussing the situation. I, I mean, I know it's easier to say it than doing it, but, you know, y you know what relationship you've got with that friend. And you know what, in, in all fairness, I never used to be like that before where I would own, like that I've said something, I would just leave it. And then it would just, the frustration would just get more and more and more on both so sides. what do you think's changed for you to help you kind of 
acknowledge your behaviors i think for me mainly it was the result that came from that situation i think is there any point in you not owning something that you've done wrong and saying sorry is that just pride is that is that just you just being like oh i don't want to say it you know i'll let them say it like i think sometimes if you feel it like you want to say it say it like, just say it. Say you're sorry before you wait for the other person to say something. And how do you feel kind of knowing that that's what you've done? How do you feel afterwards owning the situation? Do you know what? I think, if anything, it's a relief. Most of all, it's a relief. I feel a sense of being proud of myself that I've been able to do that step, which I haven't done for years, by the way. Like, if anyone knows me, they would know me as quite an impulsive person. I say I say as it is. I don't have a filter very often. And I think as I was growing a bit more I've realized that sometimes you do have to have a bit of a filter and you do have to suss the situation before you say something and I'm not saying don't be honest that's not what I'm saying I'm not saying just sit there and just be untruthful about things and just say people pleasing what people want to hear that's not what I'm saying I'm just saying that maybe take a little step back and just say okay well hmm Maybe at this moment in time, I shouldn't just be throwing truth at them, like, with full force. Maybe I should just leave it a little minute, have a nice conversation, and admit into my mistakes, and see how that goes. I know it's a pride thing, and I get it, and listen, there's a lot of proud people out there, and I, I understand I used to be one of them, and it's hard. It's really, really hard. It took me ages to do it, but sometimes you just have to. I feel as though what happens though is it links into what we've spoken about. You take back control. So if you own your behavior, whether it's really bad behavior or not, if you own it, you straight away take back control of mm. that situation. Yeah. And it's not about controlling other people or controlling the narrative or controlling what's happening at all. It's about you owning your own behavior. And, you know, thinking about when we were speaking about you can only control yourself, your responses, how you are perceived um, in terms, not how you're perceived by other people, but in terms of how you present yourself in the world. Mm -hmm. You can't control other people's reactions or responses or their perceptions of the situation. And I feel as though by kind of reacting and responding in certain ways, being impulsive, saying what you say, you know, being kind of throwing the truth at people, like you said, it what it does is it opens you up to interpretation from mm, other people. Yeah. And you you can't then control that narrative of what they think or how they feel. But if you own it, and you apologize and you try and, you know, kind of take back control of the situation, then you've done all you can in terms of, you know, presenting yourself in the best way. And I feel as though that is where you can sit with peace with the situation. Yeah, and that's kind of a step forward for you as a person. If you know what you're like in a normal situation and you are trying to approach the situation differently, it gives you an opportunity to change things and approach it in a different way and for me it was just a, it kind of was just a click you know I just realized that listen the outcome might not be what I expect or what I want but at the end of the day what the outcome is going to be what's going to be what I've done in this instance is be honest with my feelings and how I'm feeling about the situation that might be saying the truth saying sorry it could be anything but I have stayed truthful to my own feelings. And regardless of the outcome that comes from that, I will never regret that. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, you can go back and look at it and just say, well, I was honest with my feelings. So there's no no reason for me to dwell on it. Or regret. And I feel like Again, that. Yeah. Yeah. When, when you, you kind of, what you're alluding to is is staying more true to your authentic self it, it's mm -hmm. living by your authentic means and yes we can 
kind of say things in a certain way to be a little bit kinder but ultimately it's about just being honest with yourself and not making yourself vulnerable by by laying everything on the table but actually just giving what you give at the time so that you can be at peace with yourself and know that whatever happens at least you stay true to yourself you were honest mm. with the situation you apologize if you maybe didn't portray yourself in the best light mm. and I feel as though that can give you peace later on so that you don't have any regrets and yeah. you don't I think guilt and shame are two huge emotions that really contribute to poor mental health that people don't 100%. really kind of think about or understand but you know, if you're ruminating on a situation and thinking over and over, I wish I hadn't said that, or why did I say it in that way? Guilt and shame play a massive part in that. And I feel as though if you start to kind of maybe live a little bit more authentically in terms of acknowledging that we're not perfect, we all have our own flaws, we all react and respond in certain ways, but it's the repair afterwards that's important, mm. then I feel as though you can be a little bit more at peace with yourself. I totally agree with that. Honestly, I just think that sometimes, you know, pride can get in the way and I understand. But if I'm approaching a situation with someone that it just does not want to give in whatsoever and they're stubborn and they're just not having any of it, they don't even want to think about or think outside the box in, you know, in a lot of situations, I think then you're kind of like, can get into that frustration mm. cycle of, well, I, I, what, who am I talking to? Like, what am I doing? But at the same time, you could be that person and take that step and be like, listen, nobody's perfect. We all go through hard times. We get it. But I appreciate that you've been truthful with me and honest. As, as as much as, as you didn't want to be honest with me because it was really hard for you to be honest with me, I really appreciate that you have in the end mm. and then we know where we are and where we can go from. I just think what's harder is when people can't be truthful at all yeah. and then the other party can be really frustrated and left in the dark where you just do not know where to pick this from like that that's really difficult because you are exposing yourself almost so mm -hmm. you're left feeling really really vulnerable because it, it although you kind of there's that level of being authentic being truthful to to yourself and <clears throat> or to others saying what you've got to say it's also being kind of strong enough for the response because you can't control the response. And quite a lot of times people will will give that vulnerability of themselves, expecting that vulnerability back. And there are personalities out there who will feed off that vulnerability and it will feed that egotistical nature of superiority mm -hmm. and will unfortunately make certain people kind of even more shut down and withdrawn because it's almost like they don't want to acknowledge that vulnerability in themselves and so it enables them to kind of control or manipulate the, that situation because they feel as though they have the upper hand when it's those type of situations that you have to be really mindful of you, you can't control and unfortunately can't no matter how hard you try change a person they have to be willing to acknowledge those struggles or those difficulties or those patterns of behaviors that they have in themselves and you just have to recognize when is the right kind of time to say well you know what enough's enough or maybe this friendship isn't right for me right now I'm just mm. gonna leave you where you are yeah because it's not I'm on this path of growth I'm on this path where I have kind of evolved and developed and you know what that that's just the way of life people like you say don't evolve or recognize 
their own maybe patterns of behaviors at different times they don't all recognize them at the same time as one another so it's not like you suddenly hear 30 and go oh I've got all these flaws and and maybe I should conduct myself in a different way that doesn't happen you know some people get that at 20 some people never get at 50 (laughs) well some people never get it you know and it all boils down to our, our experiences and I guess it, it, it's difficult. Look, I'm not saying this is easy at all because we've all been in situations mm. whereby we've really wanted a person to to be the person we want. We really want them to be, and that's not going to happen. And you can't control for that, no matter how much you put yourself out there. I know, and that you see, it's really hard because when you decide to be vulnerable with someone, you said this so well that you can't expect the same outcome from what you've done as in like you can't you sometimes yeah they might turn around and be vulnerable back but they might not and I think you know the decision that you make when you are being vulnerable with someone is to make sure that you're being vulnerable because you want to be vulnerable not because you think that being vulnerable would get them to be vulnerable I think that's the key thing here that people need to acknowledge that if you want to be vulnerable, be it. It's but don't be pressurized point. in being vulnerable for expecting a complete different outcome because yeah. that might not happen and you'll be very disappointed. I think as well, we're, and, and again, this is without judgment because I feel like we've all been there of being vulnerable to kind of not consciously manipulate a situation, yeah. but expect a certain outcome. And... that's it's dangerous because like you've just said if you're not being vulnerable for your own reasons because actually you know you're being true to yourself you're owning your own behavior you're acknowledging it for you because you're taking back control of your situation if you're doing it for other reasons I mean it that that's kind of part of a a self-sabotage isn't it because you, you you're trying to manipulate or create a response in somebody else and you're then coordinating your emotions or your reactions in accordance with the way that they're treating you and you'll always be on the back foot well that's going to come and bite you later on if you're not being truthful to yourself I mean it's as straightforward as that if you're genuinely not truthful about your how you're feeling and you're just doing it for the sake of the right reaction from the other half then you're not gonna then you're not gonna be pleased with the outcome at the end of it and if anything there'll be more suffering double the amount at the end of it and I think if anyone can take anything is before you are vulnerable with someone please make sure that you're being vulnerable for the right reasons and not because someone's pressurizing you to be vulnerable it's very very important and I think that will help you in the future of how to approach a situation that's very difficult to you at the time. And I've been put in situations like that before where I just thought, okay, well, I want to be vulnerable, but how am I actually feeling before I start all this process about pouring my heart out to someone? Am I feeling okay? Do I want to pour my heart out to this person or do I not? You genuinely have to be ruthless with yourself. And I know it's a hard thing to do, but you have to ask that question where do I or do I not? Do I feel safe or do I not feel safe? Because regret is the biggest killer of everything. So I just think that before you do anything, when it comes to your feelings, especially if you're an emotional person as Mm. well, I think that hits harder for some people that are very emotional and require a bit more attention in that department. I think it's very important to just double ask that question before you do anything. I think you've just picked up on such an important point there. A huge important thing that creating that sense of safety. Yeah. Like, but from what I got from what you were saying, it, it's emotional safety rather than kind of physical safety. And I think it's such a huge thing that people don't really understand or don't really pay attention to. Like, it's totally different than feeling physically safe. It, it's not about being safe in your environment. It's a different ball game completely. It's, it is. It's about 
containing your emotional boundaries so that if you are for example vulnerable with someone you know you're not going to be left feeling exposed or feeling guilty or feeling shame for feeling those feelings it it means that you're not exposing yourself to manipulation that you feel as though you you've got control of the situation because you've got control of your feelings yeah but equally as well I think you made a really good point of maybe also recognizing your mental state at that moment in time and just having that pause before your response so we've said this so many times haven't we about reacting yeah to situations but now we're talking about it more so in terms of yourself so that introspective sense of actually am I in the right frame of mind for this conversation and if I'm not I'm going to set a boundary of you know I'm, I'm really not in the right frame of mind for this conversation right now I'll text you back in a couple of days that's a boundary that's an important self-care boundary that I feel not enough people implement and it's really difficult because yeah you might not have done that because you might have thought oh well this friend might you know might perceive that as me not being a good friend or me you know and so many different ways well i can give you an example like if if you're that friend that always replies to messages really quickly and you're not feeling great and you might not want to reply to this message but you feel pressurized that you have to reply to this message because you don't want to leave them you know like out in the cold (laughs) yeah hanging but I think just you just taking that acknowledgement and just say to them, listen, I know usually I respond to your messages really quickly, but in this instance, I'm not feeling like I can respond to this message, but I will get back to you. It's just a short message acknowledging and making the other person aware that you're not in the Mm -hmm. right frame of mind to reply to this message. It's all it takes. Mm -hmm. And honestly, you'll be surprised how much something like that that such a little step can get you so far because you're being honest with that person. Yeah. You're not ignoring them. I'm not saying ignore your friends when you're not feeling great because that can lead to all the problems and frustrations in the future in that relationship, regardless of being a romantic relationship, a friendship, any type of relationship. If you're not feeling great, let them know so they're aware. Don't just ignore them and Mm. just pretend that it's going to get better tomorrow because it's not. If anything, it's going to get more frustration, more... uh, You're all going to be annoyed with each other because one is not responding, the other one is not... It's just going to turn into a whole shambles and it's just not worth it. It's isn't it? And, you know, actually, you got me thinking then of a, a, a technique that um, I used to use in situations like this. If somebody doesn't feel like speaking, it's really important, obviously, that you maintain that connection so that they know they have the support there even when they need it. But also the recognition that it's absolutely fine for people just to take some downtime Mm -hmm. because it's self-care. Maybe they don't feel like talking or facing the world. It's just texting them and saying, you know, I'm here for you. I hope you're okay. You might not want to respond. I'm worried about you. Just respond with a full stop if all's okay. And they'll just respond with a full stop or whatever it is, you know. Whether yeah, it's just like, like making them aware that yeah. you're there. <laughs> you're to, okay. Yeah. And that's, do you know what? I, I know that a lot of people will just think of it, oh, that's just ridiculous. It's not. I think it's it's just a simple way of letting your friend know that you're okay, but you're not willing to talk about it just yet. You will be eventually when you're in the right, you know, space to talk about it. But even though, like, for example, me and you have got such an incredible close relationship, sometimes we just don't feel like talking Mm. and that's okay. And we both understand this with each other. And we don't take offense at all at any point. But again, I need to obviously bring myself to the real world and understand that not everyone has close relationships like that. And I'm also very aware of that. But a little effort goes a long way when somebody's going through a hard time. And don't think that you're pestering them because you don't have to. Just make them aware that you're there. 
yeah initially just and you're there just reflecting on kind of our our experiences over the last few months I feel as though me and you have both been like mm. in difficult situations we've been through the woods <laughs> we've been through the woods <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> it's been heavy hasn't it come on let's it face has, it it's been I, really you know hard it's funny actually we've been blaming it on um the bloody mercury retrograde no yeah no i was it's just, just like so funny, oh my god I, I, you know i've never obviously been like a scientist i've always been like right okay i need like evidence of this and evidence of that it's been rough <laughs> what? it's been bloody rough and everywhere you <laughs> you yeah. see on social media is like this mercury retrograde so messing us all about been messing us all about well <laughs> i'm i'm through it i am i'm taking back ownership of this situation i, I need to get back <laughs> out of the hole but no just reflecting on it so i mean i was having a really stressful time with work and and all kinds i just felt like everything was piling up on me mine was was obviously before this situation with you you went into the same kind of situation of just having a really difficult time and I just think it's important to acknowledge that that mm. not everything's rosy and you know what made me laugh so much is kind of we were when we went boxing on Tuesday oh it's my so funny. god and, and we really do still need to do this because what we said we were going to do is this Instagram versus reality kind of thing because everybody just posts all the great <laughs> stuff all the time and it looks like all the great punches yeah, having a fabulous time and oh. in actual fact I think because we've both been going through such like a stressful time, we've been knackered, we've well, we've not filmed for ages. Yeah. And it was just it was too shit. <laughs> and we wanted to film it because we were like, yes, come on, we're we're back together, you know, we're doing our thing. And it was it was just so funny, actually. Honestly, I, I feel sorry for Sarah. Can I just apologize? Like, <laughs> what the hell has happened last Tuesday? Like, that was all. But we said <laughs> so we, sorry. We were going to actually make a comedy reel of just how bad it was. But looking back, the important thing was is that you still showed up. You kind of pushed yourself to do something. And I, and I think... Thinking back to, you know, when I was going through a really difficult time, what, six weeks ago, seven weeks ago, it was just that acknowledgement of I'm here, you know, and I think one day you just turned up like I was just in the tracksuits and you just turned up in yours and was like, you know what, I've got greasy hair, but I've also got wine and I've got a bag of sweets. Yeah. And yeah who cares what we yeah. do i'm just here and if you want to speak speak if you don't we'll just sit and drink and munch. exactly i you know that's again i think that's the beauty of acknowledgement it's the fact that you know i turned up that day and we were meant to film and i said listen i know i'm ready and you're not don't be you know like stressed because you wasted my time or whatever because it's not like that at all I just, we just needed to have that chat prior and just say, are you actually feeling up to this or not? Or you just want to chill? And I was fine mm. to do either. But I think, again, acknowledgement, acknowledge it to start with and then don't take offense don't if that other, personal, yeah, yeah, if that other person says, no, actually, babe, I'm not, I'm not okay and I don't want to film today, even though we plan to film today. Oh, it doesn't have to be filming. Oh my God, can be anything, you know, can be any situation mm. in life. But, it, you know, it's, having that honest conversation and be able to be truthful about your feelings and how you're feeling will be yeah getting you a long way but i also think a an acknowledgement of yourself just being kinder to yourself because our emotional well-being goes up and down like every it, day it, it's not this you know oh we're all happy we're we're in this great space actually some days are really really crap mm -hmm. and there's no explanation for it or, or there might be but also equally there just might not be mm -hmm. and you might just wake up you might not have had a great night's sleep or it might be a certain time of the month and in actual fact you just want to yeah. hide away from the world and that's okay but I think 
people just need to be a little bit more understanding of other people's circumstances and know how to respond and not take it personal. Mm -hmm. And it all kind of comes back to acknowledging and being aware of emotions, which people say they are, but I don't actually fully believe that people do. No, I think you've touched touched up on something there that I'm really, I strongly believe that we should talk about in the future. And we do have soon some guests on our podcast, which I'm very excited about. But we want to touch up on hormones. I think that's really important. And I think that this is very important for men and women because guess what we have to deal with each other so you know even if your man watching this is really important that you recognize you know your partner's cycles and how emotions work and how it all you know breaks down for each week of every month and a lot of people it's such a taboo subject still to this day and I just find it really sad but also funny at the same time because I just think that we've had this since forever like we've all had to deal with a cycle every month as women why is this still such a taboo thing to speak about this is normal it happens every day and I just think that people just don't know enough about it at all I think they're so uneducated on in it that you just think really have we come to this time in our lives where there's so much information is available for us. You can literally just go on Google and find yeah. everything. But it's about that though, isn't it? It's about self-education because I think you're absolutely right. It's such a taboo subject. It's not spoken about in schools. You're not taught it. You know, you're taught the bare basics of yeah. reproduction, but you're not taught about your kinds of your hormones. And I think your hormones play such a crucial part yeah. in your mental health both for men and women. You know, obviously women have that cycle, but for men as well, your hormones play such a huge part and can be impacted by your lifestyle, by the environment, by the foods that you eat, by your daily routine, by how much sun exposure you have, for example, you know, getting outdoors and things. So I think it will be so interesting. I'm really looking forward to exploring that in more detail because we have got some great guests coming on. Yeah, so we can get different opinions on it because we we use very, very strongly about the subject, aren't we? Mm -hmm. But it will be really interesting to get an opinion from a professional that has seen different types of people in the situations and how they've been dealing with it and I'm just I, I'm do you know what I'm actually really glad and proud that people are acknowledging it a bit more mm. nowadays because it just get, became to the point that you were almost as a woman embarrassed to say that you are on that time of the month and you're not quite feeling your best yeah. but you're embarrassed to say you are and I just think that's just so sad come on like we're not living in the you know in a hole like we know that this happens and we're not going to be able to perform the same no. when all of these changes are happening mm-hmm. you know with ourselves and that but... also impacts how you perceive situations oh god we can go into this like in yeah. so much detail mm-hmm. it impacts your mental health it impacts your mood it impacts interactions so that will be a really great episode yeah i feel like we've come to the end already again no, and that's gone and we say this every time but it's gone really quick actually <laughs> it's gone so quickly I, yeah. I feel like we always go with like we have like not really even a loose plan but we were like yeah we'll just see what happens and then the time just flies so mm. quickly i've got such a funny story though that i haven't even told you yet oh go on oh, then there's a siren going there <laughs> the, it's the sign of the police <laughs> <laughs> I know that was that was like it right on cue, wasn't it? I've got a funny story. <laughs> the alarm is going yeah, off yeah. already. So, because I have I haven't actually seen you properly this week. No, you I haven't, have you? Chat. No. So I was working last week. I was out and about. I was down south um delivering a lecture. And it was a really important one. Well, I felt a lot of pressure for this one. Mm. And I think predominantly because the the audience was 90% male. Oh, or, wow. Yeah, yeah. Like big positions, like CEOs, directors. So I felt a lot of pressure. You'll laugh at this, by the way. You really will. So imposter syndrome, as always, kicks in. But I just thought, right, okay, no, I'm just going to go for it. 
talk about it. So I'm there and I'm giving me spiel and I'm getting into spiel. it. Spiel. <laughs> spiel. <laughs> and I'm chatting away. And um, this woman, like, just gets up and starts walking towards the stage. And I'm thinking, oh, oh, is she going to, like, join me? And I'm in full flow of talking. And she just comes over and she whispers something into my ear and then just walks away and sits back down. Whoa. Tell what me. did she say? She said to me, your fire's open. <laughs> <laughs> no, she did not. I don't know what she went. I can't sit there and not say anything. Oh my God. But no. your fire's open. And I lit In front of all these no. men. But she whispered it to me and it was really like, oh it was. no. I mean, it funny. wasn't inconspicuous because she literally walked over to me. But the topic that I was actually talking about, <laughs> you know, someone could have come and just been like, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I couldn't do nothing about it because I was like literally like on stage exposed. And I just <laughs> You're not gonna let go. I like, <laughs> <laughs> just carried on talking a little bit. And then pretended to like turn around to the presentation. Did you do your fly in the end? Yeah. yeah. I turned around to the presentation and zipped it up quick. And then she was like winking at me in the audience and I was like, oh, oh my god. God. I bet you none of them like no, I'm, I'm like generalised here, but I bet you're none of the uh, other people there uh, would have told me. Oh my God, no. But the, again, I can I just say that you've not <laughs> lost it at that point in the way of like, you could have easily just been like, oh my God. Like, I don't think I would have been able to react the way you did. I probably panicked. Oh, it made me want to <laughs> turn around. Like, needless to say, I got really good feedback. <laughs> there you go. The feedback was great. <laughs> oh my, I just couldn't believe but it. But you know but... what? That's another the thing which makes me uh, brings me back to you know when you go out with someone and you see like lipstick on her teeth or something's mm. wrong or don't just sit there and watch them let them know obviously in a ply way don't go like ha 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 mm -hmm. you know like make it yeah. obvious but you know just do like that lady came to you and said just very subtle well she walked up on stage i'm not quite sure how subtle that was but she had to tell you yeah, in yeah. some sort of she way she had to tell me she literally said to me in the list it's bothering me like, yeah I, I just couldn't let you carry on oh, and it, bless yeah. her which was nice oh yeah nice very nice of her but yeah, yeah. still embarrassing sorry that was nice but yeah anyway but that brings us oh. literally to the end of this episode the end of the episode i yeah. feel like it's been quite a good one hasn't it uh do you know what it's been so nice to be back it really has and i feel like we've both really needed it. Oh, i know it's been it's been a rough couple of weeks guys but we're back and we're good we are all happy and life goes on life is what it is isn't it it's just unfortunately these it's just real life and that's what we're here for to bring the reality of everything it's not all pictures and roses and, and everything perfect yeah we, i like to bring that thing up because not, nothing is perfect no. and that's what people yeah. need to realize we've had a rough couple of weeks we've needed to take time out but ultimately it's about recognizing when you do have to take time out because i feel especially me i don't know about you i'm one of those people that feels like i've constantly got to say yes all the carry time. on yeah just carry on yeah yeah i'll do that i'll do that i'll do that and agree mm. to things when you're over stretching yourself so i think actually it's been a really welcome kind of nice time of just self-reflection for us both Get, give us like a little restart yeah a reset because do you know what now now we're back i i just feel so grateful again that we've got this opportunity to do this and have this time and space together mm -hmm. um, safe space we call our safe space yeah, our i sanctuary. actually said okay can we just get back to our safe space please like i need to get into that studio to be able to just like feel it, like myself it does, again it's it? so weird isn't it, it has like this has got such a lovely vibe to it mm. it's just a little small room it's our safe space it's yeah, where we can just but we be love ourselves. it but yeah absolutely love it but anyway guys thank you for watching and you know what to do you can subscribe and follow us we're not gonna bore you with it all but we have to say it and hopefully next episode when you join us we'll have guests oh we've got some really really exciting guests coming up I we're know. wrapping up the end of season one actually can you believe it so episodes nine and ten will be extra special guests and then we'll be moving into season two with a whole new 
fresh outlook hopefully with a bang to, with a bang we'll be back baby. with a bang <laughs> and the sunshine <laughs> i know yeah. yeah well we've got some amazing guests amazing episodes lined up and as always if you've got anything that you would like us to discuss or any questions that you'd like us to answer drop us a dm we are always kind of open to discussing any topic yeah but well, yeah here we are this is the end yeah. of the episode wait eight yes i've got it right see, <laughs> she always makes me do this because she's challenging my memory to see how i'm paying attention to all these episodes and she's like i'm not saying it you're yeah. saying it <laughs> but yeah thank you so much for watching guys and thank we'll you, see everyone. you next time see you next time bye